Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to an updated patron, Doc Lando. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. In future months, we will undoubtedly talk about Tesla's credit rating again, but anytime we do, just remember it should ultimately be viewed through this lens. Tesla delivered on time this time, as now officially FSD is $15,000. For now, Enhanced Autopilot stays at $6,000. This was a very significant tweet from Troy Tesla -like on Friday, Tesla China apparently expecting to deliver over 100,000 vehicles for the month of September. Now, no, this does not mean Giga Shanghai is capable of producing 100,000 vehicles. After the upgrades, we were told somewhere in the neighborhood of 22,000 cars per week. But remember, at the end of August, Tesla had around 10,000 units in inventory ready to be delivered. Previously, the high watermark for Tesla deliveries from Giga Shanghai was 78,000. So if this proves to be true, that would be a massive leap. I think it's important to note, this is not just Tesla somehow riding the Chinese EV market coattails as other automakers in China like Xpeng, Liado, and Neo have reported month over month figures that are either flat or down. Granted, there are plenty of extracurricular activities taking place in China, but Tesla potentially extending the gap between it and some of this other competition in China is a thread to watch. Here we have data from TrueCar going over United States sales for the month of August. Down here, Tesla highlighted projected to do around 47,600 sales in August, compared to the same month last year only doing 23,100, up around 100% year over year. Remember, this is total auto sales, not just EVs, and we know Tesla has around a 70% share of the EV market, which is great, but we really need to watch Tesla climb the overall auto sales market in the United States. Notably, Tesla has significantly pulled away from close competitor BMW, doing around 27,500 in August. It's always easier looking at the total market share. So for August, Tesla coming in at 4.1% of the overall auto market once again in the United States, compared to only 2.1% for August of 2021. Historically, it's been somewhere between that 5 to 10% market share on the beginning of the S-curve where things start to get really exciting. Of course, it's just going to come down to the raw materials and the supply chain. Can it eventually catch up with the demand for EVs? The Boston Consulting Group has been doing annual studies each year, kind of highlighting the expected EV adoption. I just wanna show you that from 2018 in purple, where they first did one of these estimates, to 2022, now in the pink, Looking at the 2030 projections, only about four years ago, BCG was projecting EVs to be around 21% of the overall market by 2030. Fast forward four years to today, that number has jumped to 53%. This is effectively telling us that many analysts and researchers are continually underestimating the pace of EV adoption. It's important to note that this study for 2022 was done before the Inflation Reduction Act. Quick tip from a Reddit user playing Flight Simulator in his Tesla using an Xbox controller, simply plugged into where you would have the USB drive. The tip is how he's doing it through remote play on the browser. He built the site, but it's fullscreentesla.com to launch Xbox Cloud and other officially not supported streaming services in full screen. This link will be below if you wanna try it out. Tesla has some new job postings now in Thailand, public policy and business development in Bangkok. There are also a few others for categories like finance, vehicle service, sales and customer support, charging, and so on. Tesla has also filed to sell not only EVs, but solar and battery products as well, but so far, no timeline on the exact opening date in Thailand. I'd be very cautious with this one, but in one of the latest Tesla app versions due to a new visualization, there's potentially a powered frunk coming direct from Tesla. Tesla added a close animation to the frunk when previously there was only an animation to open the frunk. With the latest version 4.12, tapping on the frunk button again will close the frunk at least in the visualization. I definitely think this feature is coming at some point. I'm just not confident saying it's right now just from this data point. Quick update on Tesla's order backlog calculated by Troy Teslike. As you can see for the month of August, it's coming down off the peak of around half a million units. You can interpret this many different ways. Personally, I would attribute it mostly to Tesla increasing its production capacity, but there are undoubtedly some people that are canceling orders, waiting for the Inflation Reduction Act to go into effect, or they're worried about the economy being laid off, things of that nature. But at the same time, as the wait times come down, that should in theory ultimately increase the demand as there are just some people that don't wanna wait six months to a year to get their vehicle. Question for you. 
Would you enjoy owning a Model X Plaid? I know that my wife would because she tells me she wants one at least once per week. So if your desires are anything like hers, check this out. It's that time again as I've linked up with Omaze, the sponsor of today's video, to bring you the chance to win a brand new Model X Plaid with full self-driving, and you can support a great charity in the process, Reverb. Just head to omaze.com slash electrified, it will be linked below. Omaze gives people the chance to win once in a lifetime prizes while also helping nonprofits make the world a better place. In 2021 alone, Omaze gave over $27 million to 131 different nonprofits, and hopefully one of you can be number 6,463 right here. For this sweepstakes, you'll be supporting Reverb, a charity that partners with artists, festivals, and venues to reduce their environmental impact. They've already prevented the use of over 4 million single-use plastic bottles. And when it comes to the Model X Plaid, do I have to say anything more? Perhaps the perfect combination of space, luxury, and power. Seating for up to seven, falcon wing doors, and over 300 miles of range. Taxes and shipping will be included for United States winners, but this is indeed a global sweepstakes. So if you'd like to support the channel, support a great cause, and enter for the chance to win a brand new Model X Plaid, head to omaze.com slash electrified, linked below. Best of luck. Watching some of the initial videos from FSD Beta 10.69.1, most people are very impressed and there does seem to be some tangible improvement from the 10.69. If you weren't paying attention the first time, watch Kim's face, you can tell that she was super impressed with this maneuver at a very difficult intersection. It was not a fluke or a one-off as it pulled this off two times, which deserves a clap. Brandon said 69.x has been the biggest step forward. We already talked about Kim's level of excitement and Dirty Tesla saying the 10.69 series, the dot version updates, positively changed FSD in a significant way. Speaking of dot two, Elon said it has a relatively small number of code changes, but their practical effect will be significant. Release of dot two probably end of this week needs a bit more polish. Once again, this will go out to the rest of the 100,000 beta testers, and hopefully there will be a full on wide release to everybody that's paid for it by the end of this year, at least in the United States. Sawyer asked Elon when Tesla customers may be able to buy a power wall without also having to buy a solar system. Elon said for now supply is too low, but ordering a power wall by itself should be possible by the end of this year. This is great news and seems to come at a great time with energy prices increasing and the awareness of virtual power plants spreading and the benefits that it can offer to consumers. This would allow consumers to use a Tesla power wall with other solar or you can actually use a power wall without any solar. It would just take that energy from the grid and it would serve as a backup power source if indeed there are blackouts. It just wouldn't be free energy generated by the sun. Here we have what I believe to be some very good information on the latest on Tesla's 4680 manufacturing. Before we get into it, this new data is coming from 12 battery experts that Reuters spoke with. Nine have close ties to Tesla and three of the nine have examined Tesla's 4680s through different teardowns. This also lines up with what I heard from my source, more on that later. So Tesla is using bigger cells and a new process to dry coat electrodes, DBE from Maxwell Technologies. This new tech could have the cost of a Model Y battery, saving more than 8% of the car's United States starting price, according to these experts. However, because this DBE or the dry coating of electrodes at scale is so new and unproven, Tesla is having trouble scaling. They just aren't ready for mass production. The sources are predicting that Tesla won't be able to fully implement this DBE until 2023. If you remember, Jordan from the limiting factor in his 4680 teardown told us that Tesla is currently using DBE on the anode, but not yet on the cathode. Since this information is now public, I can share that the dry cathode has been described as an order of magnitude harder than the dry anode, still no timetable for release to production for DBE on the cathode. Stan Whittingham, a Nobel laureate, has said, I think he, being Elon, will solve it, but it won't be as quick as he likes. It's going to take some time to really test it. These sources are saying so far, Tesla has only been able to cut the Model Y's battery cost between two and $3,000 so far, about half of the savings Tesla has planned for the 4680 battery. 
The other half of the expected savings are expected to come from the DBE technique being fully implemented. The DBE should deliver as much as half of the $5,500 cost savings Tesla is expecting with the 4680s at the pack level. Tesla can produce in small volume as we've seen from Cato Road, but when they started big volume production, Tesla ended up with many rejects too many. But if all the potential efficiencies from DBE and the bigger cells are realized, the manufacturing costs for the Model Y's 4680 pack should drop to around $5,000, about half the cost of the 2170 pack. Personally, I think these production challenges of a revolutionary technique like this at scale should have been expected. You can't simply cut costs in half in an industry that's been around for decades without it being something revolutionary and incredibly difficult. The good news is Tesla has already saved between two to three thousand dollars per pack using these new 4680s, even without DBE being implemented at full scale on the cathode. How did Tesla do this? Well, with 4680s around five times bigger than 2170s, they went from 17,600 welding points in the pack down to 1,660. Ultimately, there are just fewer connectors and other components with the new 4680 structural pack. Lastly, one source said mastering the dry coating technique remains the holy grail. I would say no need to panic as a few times this year, Elon has already said that for the rest of 2022, Tesla has enough battery cell supply in the form of 2170s to meet its demand. 4680s will not be crucial until 2023. Basically, Tesla has around four to six months to get this DBE process figured out so it can start scaling production and have enough cell supply for the Cybertruck, the Semi, maybe the Roadster, but more importantly, more Model Y production. Very important disclaimer, I personally have no loyalty to the Republicans, no loyalty to the Democrats, none to Trump, none to Biden. I just go topic by topic. In case you missed it, Trump recently went on an anti-EV rant at a recent rally. Just saying basically one of his friends had an electric car, he didn't say Tesla, but that the charging took way too long and he essentially said he wanted to get rid of these EVs. As I said last week, political parties on both sides of the aisle are now essentially weaponizing EVs and this type of stuff is only going to happen more and more. So just be aware of it. This Twitter user over the weekend shared a new video of three Tesla semis lined up one behind another. I believe this was in Hanover in Palo Alto, California. Back in 2020, we saw GM offer dealership franchise buyouts for Cadillac dealerships that did not want to go through the EV transition. All of Buick's roughly 2,000 US franchise dealers will be given the opportunity to take a buyout. Most of the dealers that might take this buyout could still remain in business because they can still sell some of GM's other brands, they just would no longer stock Buick brands. As mentioned, GM's Cadillac buyout back in 2020 trimmed the luxury brand's US dealer network by roughly one third down to around 575 franchises. Honda's still all over the map here as on one hand it's saying it doesn't believe in lithium ion batteries being the future of EVs, but then here we have it securing a new partnership with Hanwha, a battery materials supplier. This coming just after an announcement, it said it was going to drop $4 billion on a new battery plant in the United States. This new partnership with Hanwha will supply Honda with critical battery minerals like lithium, nickel, and cobalt. VW has announced it is continuing to pursue an initial public offering for Porsche. They're targeting to list these new shares, which by the way, will be subject to further capital market development, so it's not set in stone at the end of September or the beginning of October this year to be completed by the end of the year. We don't yet know what the stock ticker will be. It also won't be traded on any United States stock exchanges and Porsche is expected to have a valuation out of the gate of between 60 and $80 million. From Tesla Roddy, Starlink has been deployed on one of the most Instagrammed super yachts, the motor yacht Loon. The captain said Starlink is still in its infancy and it's only going to get better. Elon says it's cool, which it is, but personally, I think this is even cooler. Starlink is already being used by many different public schools in the US. Starlink is already in use in public schools in Arizona, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, South Carolina, Texas, and Virginia. And maybe an even cooler anecdote, a total of 400 homes and 640 students are using Starlink internet at home free of charge for two years. Polestar gave an update saying, we made important progress in the first half of 2022 as they doubled revenues and volume and successfully listed on the New York Stock Exchange. 
Polestar expects to deliver 50,000 cars to customers this year, meeting 2022 sales guidance. Polestar is still operating at a loss. However, most recently, it was mainly driven by a one-time share-based listing charge from the SPAC deal. In a move to presumably cut costs, it looks like Lucid is debuting a new model, getting rid of the full glass panoramic roof and replacing it with a metal roof. The word is that both the Pure and the Touring versions are expected to get this new metal roof. However, it will be an option to have the full glass panoramic roof on the Touring model. Aurora Innovation, an autonomous driving company, is facing some challenging conditions, and now they're considering a sale to Apple or Microsoft. The co-founder of Aurora said there are some other options like cost cuts, taking the company private, and spinning off or selling assets. Personally, I think there will be a ton of M&A activity in the autonomous driving space over the next decade. Don't forget, check out Omaze linked below for your chance to win a brand new Tesla Model X Plaid. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.